Hey guys, Starwatch Media here at the Hamptons International Film Festival 2013 with the star and filmmaker of Tim's Vermeer. Would you guys like to introduce yourself? Well, I'm Tim Jennison and um, and this is Farley Ziegler, the producer. Uh, it was also produced by Penn & Teller, uh, the magicians. Uh, Teller directed, Penn produced. Um, and it's, it's, it's a kind of a very different film. Uh, it, it started out as a conversation. Uh, Penn uh, said, I'm, I need an adult conversation. I'm spending all this time with my kids and I, I'm going crazy. Can you go out to dinner with me? I said, okay. He, so we sat down and he said, I don't want to talk about show business or politics. Uh, you know, I don't want to talk about work. Just, you know, I just want to talk about something. I said, well, what do you know about Vermeer? He said, you mean the painter? I said, yeah, you know, he painted 350 years ago. He painted these pictures that look like photographs. He said, yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen them. And I said, I think I figured out how he did it. And he said, you what? I said, I think he was using a machine. I think he was able to basically trace the shapes and the colors of things very precisely with this, with this device. And he said, what are, you, what are you talking about? And so I had, I had some video on my little camera and looking through this little machine and showed him how I did it. I had, uh, did a little experiment. And he said, I totally get this. You know, he's a magician. They know how uh, mirrors work. And he totally understood it. And he said, well, what are you going to do with this? And I said, well, I'm going to try to paint a Vermeer and maybe write a paper about it or maybe do a YouTube video. He said, that's a really stupid idea. We should make a film about this. And that's how it all got started about five years ago. So being that it's a film that's five years in the making, what has the process been like? When did you come on board? Um, how's the journey been? Um, it's been very interesting because uh, Tim knew the experiment that he was embarking on, but he didn't know how it would turn out. Uh, we knew that we were going to make a film of his experiment and didn't know h how his experiment would go. And in the process, we ended up uh, going to visit David Hockney in England, the great British artist whose book, Secret Knowledge, had uh, catalyzed him on this you know, on his journey. Uh, we ended up going to visit uh, Buckingham Palace because the Queen of England owns the original Vermeer painting that Tim was going to try to paint. Uh, and then once Tim, uh, t Tim actually built, before he uh, ever started to paint, he built a two-scale model of the studio in which Vermeer painted down to the last stick of furniture. So it ended up being a journey into obsession <laughs> uh, that we no one was prepared for. I think neither, you know, including Tim. Um, and then once Tim sat down to paint for the experiment proper, uh, he had uh, nine cameras running, uh, some still cameras as well. But the uh, that that resulted in 2,400 hours of footage. Uh, that we edited, well, the brilliant editor, uh, our editor, Patrick Sheffield, edited into an 80-minute feature. And it's been a journey, is my answer. <laughs> so what were some of the challenges of both making the film and of your experiment? Did they mirror each other in certain ways? Well, yeah, you know, it's interesting you ask that uh, because, you know, I was saying basically that Vermeer used technology to do his art and we used a ton of technology to make this movie. You could not have made this movie 10 years ago because we, uh, we covered it from the very start. Everything is on video and it's, it, this, it, this is a strange documentary. Uh, it's different that way because, uh, you know, uh, there is not a single thing that's not, that wasn't filmed. And um, so, yeah, there is there is a parallel there, uh, but uh, the 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 real challenge was um, uh, making it making it work. Uh, I mean, I thought I understood exactly how Vermeer painted, and that you know you could call it cheating, but I thought that a non-painter like myself could could paint that way with with this machine. Well, it wasn't quite that simple, and that's what the film is about. And and you know. When we started, we didn't really know what kind of film this was going to be, uh, certainly not me, uh, and we didn't even know if this experiment was going to work, but um, Penn and Teller and Farley and Patrick, the editor, had to figure out, you know, out of all those thousands of hours of material, that, you know, how to pull a story out of it, and I think they did a beautiful job of doing it. Uh, it's embarrassing for me to see myself on the screen that much, but it's an interesting film, and um, it's, uh, I don't think there's ever been a film quite like it. Mm -hmm. 
So given that you, you enter into this this process not knowing what the outcome is going to be, not knowing what the film is. Um, you know, most filmmakers talk about having other influences, whether it be, you know, artistically with visual artists or other filmmakers. So once you kind of started constructing what your movie was going to be, what were some of the influences that you drew upon? Um, that's an interesting question, and I was uh, thinking that uh, Penn and Teller, being magicians, have a very uh, thorough knowledge of mirrors, and mirrors play a central role to uh, Tim's experiment and his discovery. Um, and I had no, uh, I, you know, nominal interest in science and art, so I was outside of the area of native interest in the subject. I didn't know Tim. Penn and Teller had been friends with Tim for. 20 years. And so at a certain point when I, I was on this project as a job, and at a certain point I became compelled beyond all reason, uh, and I thought, well, this is interesting because perhaps this signals, since I'm every man, this is of a greater interest. And I think to answer your question, uh, the film became really, in addition to the science that Tim just described, uh, it's really about a human being trying to do something and never quitting. And that always sounds hokey, but i am it's extremely inspiring. And audiences have consistently left uh, from having seen the film feeling uh, a little surge of, uh, of enthusiasm to follow whatever idiosyncratic uh, passion of their own <laughs> they want and never kind of throwing in the towel. So. Uh, that actually ended up being the, the frame of reference for the film. Mm -hmm. The science goes along for the ride and is central to the experiment, mm -hmm. but the humanity is really the frame. And it's maybe about the, uh, 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 the positive uh, aspects of obsession. Uh, I, it was, I was totally obsessed with finishing this painting. And, um, you know, it is... Um, maybe a form of mental illness but uh, <laughs> they have medications for it now <laughs> uh, but they wouldn't give them to me until the film is finished uh, but uh, you know I, I think uh, some great stuff gets done by obsessed people mm -hmm. I think most artists you know that's what a muse is, is an artist's obsession in human form um, but you know so what is it like being at the Hamptons Film Festival? Uh, have you guys screened yet? What's the reception been like? I love that the message is so clear. You know, everyone can relate to, to being obsessed and fighting for something. Well, uh, we just got here. We, um, you know, uh, it's great to be in the Hamptons. I've never been here before. Farley used to live in New York, but uh, it's a gorgeous place, and the weather's gorgeous. And we haven't really done much yet, and our, our, we haven't had our first screening yet. So I'm really excited. Uh, I, I, you know, um, I hope people like the film. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations, you guys. Thank you.